Welcome to your greatest life. Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Dr. Kevin Jarena and I have a question for you. Do you have stress? Do you know someone who has stress? Do you have a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a loved one who has stress? Well, I know the answer is yes. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about the most natural, holistic, revolutionary, reproducible, science-based protocols to release stress from the mind, from the body, from the brain, from life, so you can actually return to balance. You can build your better and best life. Well, welcome everybody, I'm Dr. Kevin Jarena and you are watching Unwinding Stress. I don't know what episode we are on. We are somewhere in the tens and the teens and if you have been tuning and joining along the whole time, you've been getting a, an amazing education with some of the, the, the forward most thinkers and doers in natural healthcare to relieve stress, to return you, your mind and your body back into balance. See, the thing is, the more stresses we have in life, and it's not just the thing that we saw on the news or the upsetting email that we got, it's the long-standing issues in our life that are not resolved. It may be a political affiliation. It may be something that your cousin Bob did to the family when you were five years old. It can be something that you even forgot. For example, uh, a clown pops a balloon at a birthday party when someone's three years old. We don't, people are unclear why they are afraid of clowns or perhaps balloons. Or for example, if the balloon was red, why they don't like the color red later on in life. There are events that formulate our experience, that formulate our perception, and therefore what we get, what we do, how we act, how we behave in our life. And so this show was launched because of my own experiences in handling stress and uh, an inability to handle hidden stress in my body and in my mind, in my life. And when those things came to a, a, a crescendo, a point that I could not handle anymore. I had a mental breakdown, I had a physical breakdown. Uh, you know, these are symptoms in the body, there's symptoms in the mind. We could tell stories all day about my problems, but we're not here about problem, my problems. We're here about humankind, human species, the human, the human being. That is a, a, this is an issue, this is a challenge that we all go through. And regardless of the type of stress you have, regardless of the kind of human that you are, this technique applies to you. Just like we all have bones, we all have muscles, we all have ligaments, we all have thoughts, we all have emotions. There's certain things we all have and there's certain things we all do to get a better result. And this is the concept of what is called neuro-emotional technique. And so it has to do with helping people unlock their mental stresses. It has to do with unlocking physical body pains that are hidden as mental stresses. If you've seen me before I got onto Unwinding Stress, you may have found me on the Transformation Show. I used to stream online, a uh, different couple different channels on Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and whatnot. And some of those episodes you can still find. And I called that uh, Transformation Tuesdays, and then I called it the Transformation Show. But what, what, what that was about was a book I wrote called Decode Your Pain. And this was the, uh, I wrote nine chapters about stories of clients that their pain was unresolved until we found the a mental emotional stress connection in their body. And the way our body works, our brain transfers information to our physical body and our body back to our brain. And this image that you're seeing right now is when somebody under what's called functional MRI, meaning a real-time live MRI, they're being read a script of a stressful event that that client wrote themselves, describing their own stressful event. And then after the neuro-emotional technique session, the functional MRI test was reran and the script reread, and the stressor did not light up the, the same brain centers that before, proving, and this is reproduced studies, reproduced science, reproduced information that every doctor can find, and every doctor who learns the techniques can do, 
can unlock the stresses and we can see the changes in the brain in real time in just a couple minutes. No pharmaceuticals, therefore no negative harmful effects. The effect of this care actually is you become more in tune with sensations and the feelings and the emotions in your life and then how to let them go. And letting go is really processing the event. It's the consciousness being allowed to process the emotions and the events that took place and then freeing the individual of that stress. See, the stress sticks because we don't know what to do with it. Our mind, our body literally are out of capacity to manage those stressors so that we become overwhelmed and it weighs us down. It, it changes what's called, it changes our physiological function, meaning it changes how a body part works. So perhaps you don't digest the same way as you always used to. Or perhaps a muscle doesn't do the same amount of strength work that it used to be able to. Or you just can't run or move or lift the same way you used to be able to. These are signs of a potential neuro-emotional complex, which is a statement, a phrase, that describes this imprinting of a, a, a emotionally charged event combined with a physical situation. I like, to, I like to give a lot of stories and analogies, so that's why I, I like to share the, the clown pops the red balloon at a birthday party, and then later on the adult is unclear why they are afraid or why there is stress around clowns or red balloons or anyone that wears the color red. It's because of something called conditioned responses. See, what, when nerves fire together, they wire together. That's a fun statement, and I'll say it again. That's a fun statement we use in neurology. When nerves fire together, they wire together. This is how we become good at things. This is how we develop habits. This is how we develop skill sets. We practice and we practice and we do it and we do it over and over again, and our brain and our nervous system start to connect the dots, connect the nerves, and you know, it's just wire it together. And that's not technically accurate, but it's a nice analogy we can, we can grasp of we practice the body and brain lay down the nerves and the patterns of movement and the patterns of thinking, and then we can become effective and efficient at the action or the behavior or the event. And if we are successful, well, we wire that action behavior in, and we continue to repeat that action and behavior. But what happens if at one stage of your life, that action behavior was successful, but now that same action and behavior actually is detrimental. It actually breaks you down. And so this is where old habits, old patterns, old thinking no longer work in today's world. And we have all these kind of analogies. I was, I was young enough to be blessed with the existence prior to cell phones, so I had pay phones to deal with, and I had to memorize phone numbers and things of this nature, but it was automatic. Many of these things were just automated for the mind, for the body, for the experience of life. And then cell phones came out, and there began to be less flexing of those memory muscles and those patterns of nerves that always fired and wired together when I had to make a phone call no longer did that. And so down the road, it's harder to remember phone numbers, or I don't remember the same phone numbers I used to remember. In fact, besides my own personal phone number, I really only remember two other phone numbers. Where before, I had dozens in my mind, in my awareness to reach out to. So this is something that we uh, are, are typically familiar with. And if you're the younger generation who was born uh, into the cell phone era, into the technology era, there are things that you used to do back, back when you were younger that don't work anymore. Whether it was schoolwork or how you uh, went about making friends or how you went about making money, there's things that worked and things that maybe now aren't working. And so in, in, that, in that awareness, when you're getting frustrated, there's a clue that we can begin to unwire the patterns of conditioned responses, these conditioned behaviors, these conditioned expectations, in fact. Conditioned expectations is a, funny, is a funny animal because this is where our fears of the future start to play out. We believe the future will be like the past and there is this discussion going on in the inner realms of our mind of laying the, the fears of the past on the future. And so we don't take action. We don't do the thing that we know is going to bring us greater joy. We don't do the things that we know are good for us. We get stuck 
doing the same old pattern, the same old habit, the same old thing that got us nowhere before. These are clues that there is something in the mind realm that is keeping you on a, a repeating track that keeps you stuck in life. Now that can be simple behavior, but also this can be the pains in life. These, the study I was referring to that you saw just a moment ago, that was uh, looking at patients that had received a diagnosis, a cancer diagnosis. And if anyone has had uh, the experience of con uh, having a conversation with an individual who had an, a, a diagnosis, you know that is a traumatic event. And so in that moment of the event, it wired the nervous system because the, in that moment, that person's mind is thinking a thousand things at once. What about my family? What about my kids? What about my job? What about my legacy? What about this and that? And all these concerns. And everyone falls on different sides of the coin in each individual concern. So there's all these back and forth conversations and back and forth moments. And that in itself creates this stress. And the longer that stress is there, the more it produces ab abnormal functioning which is abnormal physiology, which is dis-ease, lack of normal function. We call that ease in a certain world, but a lack of normal function, dysfunction, dis-ease. See, words are very important too because it carries tremendous meaning and, and tremendous connotation. And so when, when one word is spoken, somebody else across the table may have a different definition than you. And in that, there can be stressors found. So this is where we start getting annoyed at our loved ones because if we're trying to explain something, they just don't get it. And no matter what we do, no matter what we say, they just can't get it. Well, there's something in them and there's something in you that is interfering with the communication process. And I'm here to tell you there's something called a neuro-emotional complex that misconstrues or it, it, it provides cloudiness or murkiness in our understanding or in our perception of the world, in our perception of communication, even in what we hear. I know, and, and if you've heard this, if this happened to you, you know, tell the story to a friend of yours, share this video episode, share this episode of Unwinding Trust with a friend of yours. But if you know you've said a certain phrase a certain way, let's say pick up, pick up the bread at seven o'clock, pick, pick up the pizza at seven o'clock, and that person heard pick up at nine o'clock. Something in that person's mind, this is not all the time, of course, but this is occasionally happens, because it happens to me and it happens to my partner, it happens to uh, people that I, I work with and people that are clients. I say something, they heard something different, or vice versa, they say something, I heard something different. I, I heard 7.30 last night and when I, and a minute later I got up to check the clock and it was 7.18, or excuse me, 10.18 in the evening. And I almost got, I almost turned around and got angry and, and blaming them for lying to me about the time. But that's not the truth. I caught my mind in just in time that uh, I assumed for a moment they were lying to me about the time, that they were m messing with me or something. But the truth is, I wanted to hear it was only 7.30 at night because I had fallen asleep at the wrong time and I had slept through the late afternoon. I had missed a lot of things I wanted to uh, enjoy. But my desire, my focus, caused what I heard to be translated in a different way. We've all played that game, Whisper Down the Lane. Well, the point is, Stress can change things in our body and our mind. And we're going to be talking about the solution to that in just a moment. We're going to introduce neuroemotional technique and something called the FAST technique, the at-home version of what to do with this, in just a moment. So stay tuned. We'll be back after this quick commercial break. Thank you. Let's go, Walter. Up to you. Walter. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Kevin Drina. Thank you for tuning in and staying with me. Well, we're talking about stress, and I know that you knew someone who has stress, but perhaps more importantly, you know someone who has pain. You know someone who has life problems. You know someone who's got PTSD or is getting triggered by the simplest things in your life. Well, I'm telling you, the cup, this quote-unquote cup is full, and anything added to that cup is spilling 
over. That's the emotional cup that we're talking about here. So how do we how do we unlock these emotions? How do we unwind the emotions? How do we de-stress the system so that the person can be restored to adaptability, uh, resiliency, uh, getting that juice in life again so that they feel that they can move forward and take that challenge on and overcome it? See, when we have that freedom, when we have that, that ability to be okay, that's a key word, when we have that ability to be okay, that means whenever we think about a topic, we're not overwhelmed, we're not underwhelmed, we're, we're balanced, we're okay. It's called equanimity, and that's a state of the nervous system that's balanced so that one can adapt and respond to whatever shows up in the moment. But when we get burdened, when we become weighed down with stressors or our mind is overwhelmed with, with different things to do or unable to see the answer, well, we, we start to shut down. And how people shut down is different, different ways for different people, different kinds of shutting down. There's aggression, there's silence, there's food, there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's even exercise. People can shut down and exercise too much and turn on a problem. And there is, of course, moderation and balance for everything, but the clues are what we want to tune into. See, one of the things that I got stuck in, and, uh, and part of my story is lots of head injuries, in sports, out of sports, uh, accidents and things, doing the laundry. And in that, uh, part of the uh, natural response for many is to shut down communication, not sharing the struggles and the stories. And on top of that, me being a man, not really wanting to share my wounds, my vulnerabilities. These are challenges for men uh, to, to share openly and, vul and, and authentically. And so, because it, it shows us weakness. So these weaknesses were stressing me. These injuries were physically stressing me. And there was, of course, like everybody, there's other things going on. And so this just began to pile up and pile up and pile up. So next thing you know, I'm not taking care of myself. I'm eating poor, I'm drinking more, I'm exercising less, I'm not communicating as much, I'm, I'm, I'm not finishing my work, my work is not as good as it used to be. You know, those were the signs that I, were, I was noticing. Thankfully, I have enough good people in my life and I'm aware enough that I started to see them and I was not happy about that and I, I reached out and that is the key. Now, I didn't reach out in all ways, but I reached out in certain ways, but those certain ways were, were handholds and footholds to, to keep climbing forward, to keep moving forward. And so what, whoever that is in your life that you know, whether it's yourself or your loved ones, a friend, family member, find something that they can continue to act on, a hobby, uh, something that they enjoy that's wholesome for them. And, and, and through that avenue, then they can begin to bridge into other things. So what was one of the biggest breakthroughs for me was when I met a man named Dr. Larry Goodman down in, uh, uh, he's out of Florida, but I met him in Canada at a seminar. And uh, I had a number of issues, and the guy who was running the seminar asked this Dr. Larry to go check on Dr. Kevin, and he's having some, he's having some struggles. This is just after I had a major head injury, and, um, somewhere, we don't know, but uh, number, number 25 to number 30, somewhere in there of a concussion. And so in that, I started having a lot of significant stress, and like many of the things you see in, in wartime vets or boxers, a lot of the same type of concerns. And so through that, he helped me let go of a stress that I felt so good and so ready to do that work of why I was there in this weekend where I met him in the first place. And I came back and I began to work with this gentleman over Zoom for a period of months. And then I was so changed that I decided to become certified myself in this technique called neuroemotional technique. And then for anyone who wants to check that out themselves, it's netmindbody.com, net mindbody.com and the research website um, oh my goodness I uh, 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 one foundation.org o n e foundation f o n d a t i o n dot org one foundation.org that's the science side of things you get all you read the researchers you see the science you see the results you hear some of the explanations NET, mindbody.com, you, you can find out where the seminars are, you can learn how to become a practitioner, you can find a practitioner, you can get something called the FAST technique and the wellness checker. So I'm gonna talk about the FAST technique next, and there's an infographic to show you a little bit about it. 
And I'm going to throw another website at you. It's called firstaidstresstool.com. That's firstaidstresstool.com, all one word. And it shows you on the wrist the points that you'll be using. This has to do with the acupuncture system and how this acupuncture system integrates with your brain and nervous system, the thought side of things. And then it shows you, gives a little explanation, but it shows you the hand position and it shows you where to place your hands on your forehead. And the key factor here is to have awareness of the sensations and the feelings while doing the breath, the breath work. And that's just deep breathing. And all that's explained on the PDF, firstaidstresstool.com. And I'm gonna share a little bit about the concepts right here. I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of it right here so you can try it at home right now while we're talking, while we're doing the episode. And you're gonna feel a change. Now what that does for you, you may not know how it's gonna affect you in the future. You're not gonna know that as far as the positives. But what it's doing is it's helping you process old stressors and releasing them. All right, so I love, I love little toys to help me explain ideas. So this, what we're gonna talk about first, is a little bit how the brain, the body, and nervous system work. See, when there's clear communication between the brain and the body, and the body and the brain, and back and forth, and all that, it's just like me touching the two metal contacts on this children's toy for Halloween. I touch one contact, and then I touch the other one, and my body will complete the circuit, and if I'm working correctly, it will light up and make a noise. Yes, my physical body is working correctly. Now, if I were to use a different finger and try to find a spot on a finger that didn't really work that well, it would tell me part of the meridian system or part of the skin system that was being interfered with. So in essence, if I have an injury to a nerve somewhere in my arm and I touch this dial and the signal doesn't go through, well then the, the toy would not light up. And the same is true for organs, muscles, different parts of our body and different parts of our mind. If there's too much interference, if there's too much stress, the system gets overwhelmed and shuts down to a certain degree. Think of it just like a telephone pole that has the electrical wires going from the street to the house. Now imagine lightning struck outside, struck those wires, and the lightning went through the wires into the house, into the circuit breaker, and if the circuit breaker wasn't there, the house would burn down. But the circuit breaker flips, protects the house from burning. The electrical, the electrical charge doesn't get through and the house is saved. Well, think of the circuit breaker box kind of like a protective system for your body. If my body is getting overwhelmed with signals and problems and injuries, physical, mental, emotional, chemical, nutritional, whatever it may be, there's a certain point where the body gets overwhelmed and there's a shutdown phase. The circuit breaker shut off. Now, in the house analogy, imagine that circuit breaker goes to the kitchen and the wiring goes to the refrigerator and the microwave and the dishwasher. Well, the, depending on how long you're away from the house and how long the power is out, how well is the refrigerator doing? Well, the fridge itself physically is fine, but what's inside the, you know, the, the, the fruit, the vegetables, the meat, the cheeses, the butter, all the things frozen, all the popsicles and ice creams and whatever else you got in there those things start, they can last for a period of time, but over a couple hours, a half a day, two days, they start to melt, they start to deteriorate, they start to break down, they, they turn bad. So simply put, just like the life force energy that's flowing between the brain and the body, from the, from the powers, the forces within that turn on the immune system, so when you cut your finger, it heals, that the same system that you break your bone, you go to the, you go to the emergency room, they set the bone, they put the cast on, the doctor says, now let nature take its course. Your body has to do the healing. However, if there's too much burden, if there's too much stress, if the system's having too much interference, the healing power is diminished, the healing ability is diminished, or perhaps not at all. And this is where we have these adaptations that bring on symptoms and a number of symptoms we categorize as a diagnosis of a disease. And a disease is a, a collection of symptoms, a collection of misfiring physiology or, or, or wrong or what's called adaptive physiology producing an unwanted state. We title disease, we title sickness and illness. 
However, it's, in, it's a call from your body. It's a call from your mind. Pay attention. Nourish me. Love me. Let go of something. Forgive. There's a purification needed and there's, a, there's an addition needed somewhere. At the end of the day, in simple terms, there's really only two reasons why people have illness and feel bad. They're missing something they require or they're not getting something that they need. That's kind of the same thing. Let me back that up one second. They're missing something they need, so they need to get something they require. The other side of the coin is they have too much of the things they don't need. Well, I know we're getting down to uh, the wire, if I heard that correctly, and we're getting down to the end stage here. So if we go back to that, that graphic, the first aid stress tool, what you're doing is you're placing your fingertips right on your wrist points where you would feel your pulse. And all you're doing, and the reason why I do that, is I'm feeling a stressful moment come on. I'm feeling the trigger. I'm feeling the anger. I'm feeling the sadness. I mean, I'm feel, uh, feeling the sadness. Whatever way you're going, the, the overactive or the underactive, it's a response to something that's happening now, and it's a response to something that's already happened in the past, or it's a response to something that's a perceived concern for the future. So we hook up our fingertips to the points, and we place our hand on our forehead, we go into the feeling of the sensation, and we bring our breath in and out three, four, five, six, seven times, and you wait for the shift inside your body. Go ahead and try that. Think about something that's stressing you. Think about a pain in your body. Think about, uh, think about someone who's a problem in your life right now. And allow yourself to feel that feeling. Put your fingers on your wrist, hook up on your forehead, Breathe in and out three to five times. You'll do the same thing on the opposite hand while feeling those sensations. You'll breathe in, breathe out, letting that cool air come in, dissipating that energy. And then when you come out of it, you'll notice if you graded yourself, if you rated yourself, I feel 80% angry when I think about this topic. And if I were to check myself again, I'll, I'll tap into that, that same scenario. And I may feel 50%, I may feel 20% angry, I may feel, I may feel the same. And if so, repeat, 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 repeat. Firm pressure or light pressure, both sides. There's technique to this. There's, there's more that can be understood, understood with experience and, and, and trying it out. And the best recommendation, of course, is find a neuroemotional technique specialist, certified practitioner. They're all over the globe. They're concentrated here in the United States of America, and there's some that have not completed the full certification process that can still get you great help. But I promise you, this is the most advanced, holistic, natural uh, therapeutics to help change the brain from the inside out, to help you change your life from the inside out, which is where you'll be getting better results and a more enjoyable experience. I hope this has been helpful for you. Please share this uh, with a friend that's struggling, because they'll find some hope in this and they'll get some tools and techniques that will help change their life. And pass the website along, firsthstresstool.com. And of course, you can find me at drkevang.com. That's drkevang.com. You can find all this information there as well. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is Unwinding Stress. We'll see you Mondays and Mondays at 9.30 in the morning, I believe. Take care. See you next week.